The sprint retrospective is the final event of the sprint. It is an opportunity for the whole scrum team to stop, pause and inspect their processes. No one outside of the scrum team attends this event because it is an internal look at how the scrum team work together. It is focused on looking at how the last sprint went with focus likely given to individuals, interactions, processes and tools as needed. And for that, we need a safe space of just our own scrum team. In simple terms, its purpose is to identify ways to improve the effectiveness of the scrum team and increase the quality it delivers. In terms of its time box for a one calendar month sprint, the time box for a sprint retrospective is three hours. However, if your sprint is shorter than one calendar month, then the time box typically shortens too. The sprint retrospective is a very powerful scrum event. We've talked a lot about this empirical feedback loop that Scrum as a process is designed to exercise. Whereas the sprint review focuses on the increment as an inspectable artifact, the sprint retrospective is an opportunity for the Scrum team to take an internal look about how they work. It is their opportunity to openly and honestly consider how well the last sprint went and where necessary collaborate on ways to improve. Everyone interacts as peer team members, including the Scrum master. There is no hierarchy in a sprint retrospective. The inputs to a sprint retrospective are the outcomes of a previous sprint, how it went, but also a healthy culture within the scrum team of the five scrum values being lived. Without the necessary culture to allow for improvements to be identified, a sprint retrospective can be a stale and formulaic affair. On a similar note, consider how the culture of openness may be impacted should there be managers external to the scrum team present. However helpful you may think a manager might be at this event, do not invite them. It's harder to create transparency around areas of improvement for fear of being seen as incompetent when a manager is present. A Scrum Master will support the Scrum team with positive techniques for use in facilitating for a sprint retrospective, whilst bearing in mind the necessity of supporting the five Scrum values. Another input to the sprint retrospective is any data that has been gathered during the previous sprint. Did we meet the sprint goal? What is our net promoter score? How is team morale currently holding up? How many support queries were raised? Data can be powerful in a sprint retrospective because it depersonalizes areas of conflict and creates topics for discussion. The output of a successful sprint retrospective is simply that the scrum team have a clear way to improve. Improvements don't need to be large. Even small scale changes will compound over time. In fact, identifying smaller changes sometimes have a greater impact because the team materially have more control with implementing them. These improvements may even be added to the upcoming sprint backlog in order to be acted on. By adding them to the sprint backlog, the Scrum team makes it clear and transparent that they are committed to improving how they work. Although it is not mandatory, the commitment of the definition of done is an incredibly important talking point during the sprint retrospective. The definition of done, if you can remember that from the video, creates a common language of inspection. It demonstrates a commitment to quality in the form of the criteria it contains to the stakeholders. The continual tightening and refinement of the definition of done during the sprint retrospective is vital to iteratively and incrementally improving the product. It is important because without a consistently applied definition of done, the state of the product is unknown. When I was first starting out as a scrum master, I remember one of the best tips I was ever given when it comes to the definition of done. It is far better for a scrum team to consistently conform to a weak definition of done than for a scrum team to consistently ignore a strong one. The reason why this is true is because a weak definition will, over time, be improved. However, a scrum team who have consistently ignored their definition of done have produced an inconsistent and likely unsupportable product, whilst at the same time telling their customers that it meets this awesome set of quality criteria. Don't lie to them and don't lie to yourselves. The takeaway from this topic on the sprint retrospective is that it is so important for the scrum team to stop at the end of a sprint and look back. Looking back allows them to honestly and transparently inspect how they work with regards to individuals, interactions, processes, tools, and their definition of done. Without taking this opportunity seriously, the scrum team will likely either maintain how they currently work and never improve, or more likely form bad habits that without inspection and adaptation will bed in and consistently decrease the quality and value that they produce every sprint. Any team that says we can't come up with anything to improve is actually telling you one of two things. Either they are perfect and nothing can be done to get better, or they were too lazy to really think about it. I don't know about you, but I know which one my money's on.